Hi everyone, welcome back to Retro Recollections. This week I'm doing a game review. Now, as you know, if you're a viewer, I dabble with lots of different systems and emulate a load of 8-bit systems that I don't particularly have yet. Although I wish I did, I don't have the uh, the funds or the means to get every single bit of kit that I'd like, or the space really in the studio. But this week I've been playing a game called Night Night by Juan J. Martinez, I hope I've said that correctly, um, for the MSX system, which is an 8-bit computer which was pr predominantly in Japan in I think around the early 1980s also it had a bit of a following in Brazil and some parts of Europe it wasn't very big in the UK or the USA um, some of you may know a bit about the background it's a totally new system to me I've never used one um, they're actually quite nice looking designs uh, the, the actual machines look really nice I, I do quite fancy one to be fair and after I've played this game um, even more so now um, it's runs a uh, Microsoft Basic, so it, and it was an attempt to unify lots of different um, systems at the time that were using variants of Basic to a unified system that would be compatible. Because a lot, a lot of the systems at the time all used Basic, but were weren't compatible. This was an early attempt to try and bring that together. It didn't quite work, and then eventually we ended up with the IBM PC uh, at a later stage, but. Um, that's a totally different story. Today I'm talking about the game. It's called Night Night and it's actually a brand new release. I've sort of got into this um, thing about looking at new games at the minute for old systems and uh, I'm fascinated to be fair how fantastic some of these games are that are being produced today for systems that have, are obsolete basically. Now I'm a massive um, fan of 8-bit systems. I grew up with the Sega Master System console, I grew up with the Commodore 16 um, computer and I also used the BBC Micro at school so I, that's my my thing you know I'm of that age and a man of a certain age so I really enjoy exploring those systems so that is what I've been doing and I've come across this game I don't know how I um, came across it originally I started following Juan on Twitter and somebody must have shared his um, his, you know, one of his tweets talking about his game, and it looked great. And the screenshots looked great, and I started following him and um, keeping tabs on how the development was going. And then recently he announced a release. So, um, and he he's a free and open source developer. So uh, he's he's produced quite a few games. I'll put links or a link in the description as to where you can get his games. Uh, but he tends to release everything open source, free to download. You can. Um, Give him a little tip. I think he uses Kofi or Coffee or whatever it's called, uh, and I certainly shall be doing that um, if you want to. If you enjoy his work and you want to encourage him, but yeah, he's done quite a lot of games. This is, I think, if I, unless I'm totally wrong, this is his first MSX game. He's done quite a few games for the ZX Spectrum, and he's done a, a Commodore 64 game and a couple of other systems. But when MSX came up, I thought. Oh, this is interesting. It's not it's not a system I've dabbled with before. So I fired up an emulator, and I fired up the game, and wow, it's it's bloody brilliant. <laughs> um, it's um, it's got so many features. One of the good features it has is um, every level um, gives you a you can get a pass code for it, so you can go back and retry it because it isn't easy. You know, I'm not the brilliant, I'm not the best sort of game player in the world but I found it quite hard you know some of the levels do get tricky and the and the enemies uh, another fantastic part of this game are absolutely spot on they, there's I think there's about eight different monsters and all slightly different I'll go through a little bit of it when I'm show you some gameplay but they all work very very well and um, the game isn't is challenging it isn't an easy ride so it's good to have those passcodes. It reminds me a lot of certain Master System games used to give you passcodes like Galvalius and stuff so you can go back and um, retry levels or save your position in the old school way. Um, and it's beautifully cut, you know, it's beautifully designed, it's colourful, it's got awesome music, it's very catchy tuned that plays through it. 
and uh, I think you'll agree it's definitely worth a download considering it's absolutely free as well. You can also purchase a cartridge version if you've got the original hardware, unfortunately I don't, but you never know one day and it's something I would consider buying because it's the, the, the packaging and the, everything is fantastic and it's worth having in your collection if you're a collector of, the, of that system. So without further ado, let's have a quick look at the, some of the levels on this game. I haven't got particularly far because viewers will, who have watched some of my videos in the past will know I'm not the best gamer. I, I, tr I like to play games, but I'm not, I'm not brilliant at it. But you shall see some, some nice levels, some nice level design, and um, I just love the game. So here you go. As all good games do, this game has got a really nice backstory. You play the character of Sir Bernard, who is a knight. So Sir Bernard has been cursed by um, witches, I believe, and he, only, he can only get some sleep at night by taking a long walk, which is not easy at all when you're living in an enchanted castle. So you need to help the old knight break the curse and get some rest by walking around the castle, avoiding all the hostile creatures that inhabit the walls of Scarkeep, which is the name of the castle. Night Knight is a single screen platformer with a strong classic arcade feel. You race against the clock to step over the tiles in the room, pick up the key and exit through the door to the next stage. So the game can be controlled with uh, cursor keys and you can use uh, cursor up or space to jump. You can also use a compatible joystick. If you press stop in the game, uh, it will show a valid password for that stage. Now that is, is crucial because otherwise I don't think I'd ever get much further than level level 4. <laughs> it isn't a mega mega tough game but it, it is very challenging and the, uh, the enemies are very good so they do keep you on your toes. Right, items to collect on, on this game are quite interesting as well. Obviously the key it opens the door to the next stage so that only appears once you've lit up all the tiles on the screen the sand clock resets the time this is really handy obviously because more and more often you'll run out of time before you can get to the end of the level and this will reset the time back to 60 seconds which is what you get initially there's a shield which it protects you for one hit because as with many platformers uh, as soon as you touch an enemy you're dead you lose a life so you've got to go to the next life and I think you only get three per game so um, it is quite tough so the, the shield comes in very handy. The stopwatch stops time for a few seconds and it also freezes all the enemies and moving platforms on the stage. Uh, enemies can still hurt you though if you touch them so be careful don't jump onto uh, an enemy while they're frozen. And gems are scattered all over the castle these appear randomly every so often as you're playing and these give you extra points and if you get 10,000 points then Sir Bernard will get an extra life and it says in the documentation you will need it and you definitely do. The game has over 80 stages which is amazing. Right we'll go through a few of the enemies you won't see them all here because um, I haven't got amazingly far I think I've got up to about level 7. Uh, the undead they're not particularly clever they just wander back and forth and you just have to jump over them to, and they're quite easy to avoid. Right, the archers, you've got to be careful of these guys because if you stay in, in front of them for too long, they will fire arrows at you. They patrol a fixed area and they use their longbows to shoot arrows at you. So if you stay out of their line of sight, they won't fire at you. So one good strategy is to stay behind them and, and be careful when they turn around, move out of the way immediately or jump because they will, they will hit you. The Dark Knight. This knight walks and jumps around in his shiny armor. They're not confined to a specific area and move freely in the in the stage. So these don't they don't actually follow you, but they jump around the, the whole level. They can go up and down in a similar way that you do when you're playing. So um, you need to avoid those at all costs. The Ghost. Lost souls that fly around the castle. Walls can't stop their eth ethereal presence, and they're particularly difficult to avoid. So keep your eye on them all the time. I haven't got to these yet because I haven't got that far but that sounds particularly difficult it's difficult enough avoiding the ones that you got on the screen that are actually bound by the physical rules of the game but if the ghost can float anywhere around then you're definitely in trouble the vampire Lord of the night the vampire can change between two different forms walking humanoid and a flying bat looking out for victims so be very careful 
the wizard. This is a magic user that has the power to undo your progress. So the wizard will follow you around the stage and turn the lights off on the tiles that you've already lit up. So um, it says it's advisable to deal with the area covered by the wizard last because he will not change the color of floor tiles once the key appears. So do him his area last. He can't turn them off. So there's a good tip. The werewolf. Half human, half wolf. Werewolves move freely around the stage and he can use his sharp senses to attack you from below when he perceives you're on higher ground. So this is interesting. So if you're above him, he will see you. He will sense you, I should say, and um, then he will cause you problems. You can use his instincts against him though by luring him to a platform and then get out of his way. The witch's cat, a magic creature. The cat does as she pleases. She can move freely up and down levels by using magic. She changes p platform quickly, so be ready to jump aside when the cat is below or above you. So another one to keep out of the way of. So yeah, uh, other than the fantastic enemies on this game, the, the actual um, stages are lovely and colourful. Like I said, I'm not uh, an MSX user i've not had any experience with the system but it, it reminds me a lot of the master system and and i know there was a little bit of a crossover between the the precursor to the master system the sg1000 and msx systems so um, i think there's a little bit of history joined the history there and you can sort of tell but this game is beautifully designed um, your character sprite i love the way he moves around you can see the animation and obviously the enemies as well the animation and all the characters is top notch and the level design is, is, is fantastic, some beautiful designs here. They're colourful and like I've mentioned before, the catchy theme tune all the way through the game is really an earworm after you've played for a while. What else can I say really? The game is brilliant. Juan has done a fantastic job with this game, you know, and I look forward to some more from him and I will be checking out his Spectrum games especially because it's another system I've started to play. I can't praise this game enough. Well, I think you'll agree this is a great game. So thanks for watching uh, this little review. Uh, like I said, if you look in the description, there will be a link to um, Juan's games there and this game in particular. It's really well designed, it plays brilliantly, and I'm gonna be spending hours on this trying to get further than, I think level seven is what I got to. But yeah, it's, you can't, be, you can't beat it. It's, it's, it's definitely worth a go. So again, thanks very much, thanks for watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you didn't like it, you can give it a thumbs down. You know, that's life. <laughs> and um, I'd really like it if you uh, would share it as well, if you think it's worth sharing. And if you haven't already subscribed, why not subscribe? I've only got a few subscribers, so I'm trying to build the channel up. Um, and I'd like to hear your thoughts about what you'd like to see. My angle with this channel is I'm going back to what I did as a child and but also exploring lots of systems and things that I didn't have the opportunity to play as a child due to money, you know, and other circumstances. It wasn't possible, you know, to be fair, it's almost quite not possible now with the prices of certain things, but we have emulation as well now, which makes a hell of a difference uh, to things. So that's the sort of angle. I'm also going to be doing a few other things uh, retro related, not necessarily strictly to do with games, but there will be um, a game element in there if it isn't about a game. So stay tuned for that sort of thing. I've got a few ideas. And yeah, if you please like to share and um, follow me i'm also on twitter and i've got a facebook page and i also have a patreon and a a coffee page or coffee page i suppose it is supposed to be coffee because they're supposed to buy you a coffee but i don't know they always spell these things funnily but yeah if you'd like to contribute financially to me that would help a lot it'll help me buy some equipment i recently bought as you can see i'm using green screens and lighting and stuff i'm looking to get hold of some capture equipment it doesn't have to be top of the range stuff but just to capture some real hardware because i do have real hardware but i just can't show it in a good way on video because i don't have that equipment so if you want to help out with that that's what my next purchase is hopefully going to be, unless I buy another computer. So, <laughs> thanks very much for watching, and um, I'll speak to you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.